I'm just going to go back in and like this is a hard edge on mine right here on this rock. So in order to maybe blur that a little bit and have it feel like it's got that frothy water coming over it, that's where I would look at using a flat brush and um, just softening some of those edges here and there. And then that softening effect will help kind of connect it into the water a little bit more and make it feel less um, cut out, less like it's floating. And then I may still need, because I did not finish this, um, I may still need to go back in some of the lighter areas of my water and add a little bit more um, color in a few places, a little bit of um, tone to, um, whoops, wow, my brush lifted some color, um, to make them have a little more depth. Because if it's really white, it's like when you're taking a photograph and it blows out the white part of your picture yeah. because it's, you know, it's not got the settings correct. Um, and it's also hard for a camera to know, okay, do I adjust for the darks? Do I adjust for the whites? You know, and so you have to, um, usually with a photograph, you're going to push it so that it's getting the whites correct and the darks are going to be too dark. And then when you go home, if you want to see what's going on in your darks, then you would lighten your picture some in order to see what's going on in the darks. Okay, so then same thing down on this rock right here, I can just soften that bottom edge a little bit and make it feel like it's sitting in that um, frothy water a little more. And um, so it is just picking a few places here and there, even if you want your rocks to have hard edges, um, usually it's kind of at the bottom sometimes it's on the side of these um, like this one is really too hard edged and um, my dark shadow is so dark that it looks like a hole so I actually would just go in with my brush and lift just a little bit of that color so that it's not so dark that it looks kind of flat and um, like I said like a hole it should have just a little bit of something happening in there so that it feels like it's um, a shadow on the rock or a darker part of the rock um, and that it's not a hole basically because it, if it's too flat and black it can feel that way all right so whoop, just kind of picking some places and going around and doing that can help and then if you guys um, brought yours and you have specific questions when I'm coming around tonight feel free to ask and I can help you um, see if we can figure out if it needs anything. Okay, any other questions on that one for now? Okay, so that was wet and wet and we were working with um, water and putting on colors kind of in random, um, not colors in random places, but we were working with going light to dark and um, leaving lots of white and having it look blurry. The one that we are going to do next is, let me see if I can get myself adjusted here because it has to be viewable, okay, is um, this one which is the um, basically lots of dark rocks, lots of frothy water, but it's hard edged water. There are some softer edges in places in here and because we've used masking fluid, we will go back in and soften edges because if you just leave it exactly like you've masked it, a lot of the time it will look um, cut out and weird and um, not right. So we need to, where we were adjusting the rock edges here, we'll be adjusting the water that we've masked in places here. Um, so we're going to start with the water that's in the, the greenier, greener part of the water up in here but I will start with the blue to mark that because then I'll know where I need to paint around. Now, like I said, if you masked that, then you don't need to do this step. You could just start right into um, the um, green part of the water. And so I'll go ahead and put my blues on here and then I've got this second one that I've got the blue already on there and I can show you the next part on this one. So, that there.
color-wise for this one, I am going to be using um, ultramarine blue and new gamboge to make that um, kind of olivey green color that's in the water. And my photo, and I'm working from the same photo you guys are because I have a different print of it. The uh, photo is a little yellower green than what I was seeing on my screen at home. So this one, I, make, I pushed it a little greener because I figured the greener water is a little nicer to look at than the yellowy green. So even though it looks kind of a yellowy green here, I am making it a little greener than what I'm seeing. Um, get this one out of the way. Oh, I'm sorry. So we have um, masked our whites. Yes. I did not mask my blues. And then um, I'm going to start by putting in some blue for the uh, parts of the water that are reflecting the sky. And they are also light, but I start with them kind of light. I'm actually maybe going to start with them just a touch. Maybe I'll get them right tonight so I won't have to go back over them. But it's okay if they're light. At least that marks where they are and then when you're painting your darker uh, water you'll know where you want to go around and the water that we are painting is stop action and pretty much everything has edges um, there are edges that are very close in value so they may look a little blurry but um, they're let's see if that's on yeah um, they're they've got an edge to them this is cobalt that I'm getting out. If you don't have cobalt, you can use um, like cerulean or you could use ultramarine. Um, I would not use thalo for this. Thalo is going to be too turquoisey. Um, so cerulean is still turquoisey, but it's not as vibrant. And then I'm getting out some Quin Rose because I want uh, these to be just slightly um, purple, purple blue. So. There, um, you could go straight blue, but this to me just re reads a little more like um, it matches what I'm seeing in the photo. Okay, and then there are places in the center of this, if you're looking at your photo right in here, that are that kind of blue purple. I did not include all of that. I just made that as part of my um, greens that are in there. So there's only a few places that I'm going to be putting this color. So to start, I only got out my cobalt and quin rose. Later I'll get out my colors for the water. Because the, these would have to dry if I was doing this um, step by step. So I'm making sort of a periwinkle color. So it's sort of a pale purpley blue color on there. And then I am going to just start from the back. And there are a couple smaller places back there, but I'm not going to put those in. It's partly because this is a smaller image. And I'm just finding those shapes and just making sort of an abstract kind of shape around that rock on that um, area right up in there. I'll hold is it. Is it on the rock or next to it? It's next to it. It's okay. in the water. So um, there is a, a little bit of a line of that same color kind of going down right in the center between the two big rocks. Mm -hmm. So um, can't really see it on this one very well. And then right here next to the big rock it is, and I'm not worried about the darker green parts of that. I'm just going to paint right over those because that little bit of darker green that's got some shape in there, um, I can put those in later. Okay, so I've got those in, and there is a big shape of the color right in here. And then there's, yeah, it, it, part of it is when you do this kind of water more, then you start to see it more. 
And, and it, is, it is more that observation thing of you, you have to do enough of it to see it, basically. Um, and then I'm going to put a little bit right down kind of in that part that goes between the two front rocks. Um, it's, it's right up next to the, the dark rock on this side. So I will turn this around so you can see it. And then um, I'm going to switch to my other painting. And I, that one is a little different than this one. So I've just marked, you know, I've placed it um, in a few places around. Okay, if you have this one as mm -hmm. your best copy, I mean, mm -hmm. I've got the colored one. I am having trouble seeing where you even see that in on this because so, it's so green. Yeah, so like right, right there, there, right there. Okay. Anything that, see how it looks similar to the white, but it's not white? Yes. Those are the things, and then in okay, here there's a lot, but I'm ignoring that. I'm just giving it some, yeah. So it, it kind of depends. The reason I'm ignoring um, the, the sky color that's in here, you could put it in that way if you want and put less green, um, but it's just, there's a lot of, um, if you were gonna put this in as the sky color, I basically would just paint this all blue and then come back with your darker green colors because the darker green is going to be dark enough that it's going to go over that. Yeah. So if you want more blue in this middle section, then this whole area, um, I would say you could just put some blue in there. And so then, that, that would be everything except what we've masked for white. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, so if, if you want to put a little more blue in there and then then, but look at your image because there are darker um, green mid-value shapes with on top of that light blue. So whenever I'm doing a watercolor, I'm thinking in layers. And um, I don't know if it's just because I've done it enough now, that's the way I think. Um, it may be because when I was doing computer clip art, we had to build it in layers. Um, but basically I'm always thinking okay what is my lightest light what can I put down and then can I put whatever's going on top of it will that matter if I put another color on top of it now if it was if this was blue underneath and then I had to put orange on top of it then I might think yeah. oh, that's gonna maybe tone the orange and maybe make it more neutral so if I want a vibrant orange then I would not put the blue under it if you are okay with your orange being sort of um, muted and not vibrant, then you could put your orange right on top of that color. Um, but the green is in similar family. It's in a cooler family and it's going to be darker than your, your periwinkle blue color. So the green can go on top of it and not be um, competing with that, that blue color. Same thing is if I had put orange down here first, then I wouldn't necessarily want to put um, a green or a blue on top of it if I want that green or blue to be vibrant color. Okay? All right, so I have that down. Um, I was going to switch to that one, but because I only need to take a few seconds to dry this because it's not real dark, I think I'm gonna go ahead and work with this one, and then if I need that other one, I'll have it ready. So I'm gonna dry it real quick. I'm now going to get out my ultramarine, my new gamboge, and I am going to get out a warm red because within this uh, waterfall there are rocks underneath there that are warm and kind of rusty orange almost, and I am seeing orange in the water. Now if you decide I don't want to mess with that and you just want to do a variation and do some yellow greens and some um, blue greens you could ignore the orangey red that's in there. It's up to you, but you don't have to put that in if you don't want to. So actually, I will turn this so you guys can maybe up front can see that one. I need a Vanna to be able to, you know, like <laughs> show the pictures. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got a new gamboge out, and then I'm going to get out my warm red, which for me is my parole scarlet. If you have vermilion or cad red, um, you just want a, a red that's leaning toward orange. Because that red, one, it's in the water that way, but also if we mix it with the blue at some point, it is a more neutral purple. It is not going to be a vibrant purple, which I don't want for this. 
Okay, and then I'm getting out ultramarine, which I need to fill. And um, I want this to be a medium value when I go to put my water in. If I can give it sort of a mid value, it's not going to be the darkest area necessarily because I went back after I had my first layer in and I added some marks on there to give some darker marks in the water. So if you want to pass that around so everybody can see that. So I did add another layer of marks after I had done this um, layer that I'm going to do now. Now, it is up to you whether or not, because this is small enough and you guys are painting a, a little bigger with your um, five by sevens, but you can decide, okay, I'm gonna wet this area or I'm just going to paint it on dry. I'm going to show you how I do it on dry and then you can decide which way you wanna do it. If you paint it on wet, when you put your mix on there, that water that's on there is going to take um, and add a little water to the color, so you're now going to have a slightly lighter mix. Um, it's not that you need to paint it, you don't, don't want to paint it as dark as some of the darker rocks up in here, but just be aware that it might lighten it a little bit if you use water. So when I am thinking, okay, I'm going to paint this on and I'm going to be changing colors as I go because I'm seeing yellows, I'm seeing some oranges, the orange part of that I'm not going to put in right now. I'm going to drop that in while the, the first layer is still wet or damp. So right now all I'm thinking is ultramarine blue and new gamboge. So I'm, I'm making a little bit of a mix over here. I am going to um, start at the top of my shape or at the back of my painting and move downward. And I'm going to be painting around those lighter blue uh, shapes. And you can leave little openings like I'm doing if you want to, to put some um, other color in. And so my biggest thing right now is just having this wet enough. It has to beat up a little bit because if it is not wet enough and if it doesn't beat up, you're going to start having dry areas or lines appear as you're painting. Okay, so now I've got some more yellow in there rather than the blue. I'm going back to um, some more of the green part of the water. You could even push it so it's a little blue in places. And I'm going around my lighter blue um, shapes. And I have to be careful of this edge. What you can do is if you're working around some of these little shapes over here, you can just drop, see how I just push my brush there and I get a bead of paint? That um, bead of water and paint that's right there gives me time to go around this um, edge over here. Okay. So you're saying your brush paint has to be wet enough? Yes, it? yes, and if it's not, then I would get a little more water. So this is wet enough that it's going to run on my palette if I tip it enough. Mm -hmm. So you need it to be wet enough that you're going to, and then plus this brush holds a lot of water. Um, so if your brush doesn't hold as much or maybe your paint is not as wet, then um, I would get a little more water in it, but you also need to make sure that your value is dark enough over here. So it may require getting a little more pigment out if you need to in order to get the mix right. Okay, so now I've come down, I've met the top of the rock right here, I've gone around my lighter blues, and this blue mark right here, the first one I painted, that helps give direction to the water because it's going like this around that rock. If it's not there, then the water is just sort of going to look like it's going like this if that mark is not there. So one of the reasons to put that in is because it can help give direction. And some of the marks that I will put on after this is dry will also help me with that. So I am now grabbing a little bit of my warm red and I'm going to dry the back of my brush because I don't want to um, charge it in. So now I can just put in a little bit of that warm red in a few places and wherever it hits a greener area it's going to or a blue blue green area it's going to 
um, go a little more muted. Where it's a little more toward the yellow green, it'll be a little brighter. And so that just, and I didn't exactly go with what's on the photo. I just chose a few places and put it on there, okay? So now I've got that one in. There are some corner, or little, um, there's a triangle right here and a little shape in the corner that are the same colors in the water. Um, and I want to, again, do a little bit of variation. So I started with it being a little greener, and now I made it a little bluer. So if I tried to go put some orange in there right now, if I wanted to, it is so wet, the orange is just gonna move and take over. So I'm going to wait and not put anything in there yet. And I'm going to go over here and fill in this corner. And so by doing this, it starts helping me see, okay, there's my rock. This is the top of a rock. Here's a rock right here. And this is sort of that figuring out where everything is by using your color to help you define it. Okay, so this is still a little wet. I wanna go just put a few little um, touches of red in there. And so I lifted a little bit of that color at the bottom. And again, I'm going to dry the back of my brush and I can just touch in a couple places. There we go. And then maybe just a little bit right in there. And again, if you don't want to put this in there, I kind of liked the variation from having the greener water to that little bit of warm. But it's not, um, no one's going to go, well, there was red in there. <laughs> so they're not going to know. All right. And now I'm going to come down and start, I will actually start back here at the back. So this, this part right here in the middle, I'm thinking, okay, here's the top of this middle shape. And so instead of starting like over here and then moving that way, I usually start at the top and move downward. Okay, so back up in this area, let's see where I'm at, there um, it's a little darker right by the rocks. And one of the ways that you can push it a little darker is to use your ultramarine and go over to the warm red and make sort of a um, neutrally uh, dark purpley brown color. Now that also is something that you could put in um, as a second layer. If it gets too like, oh, I can't remember all that. You could just wait and do that um, later on top of some of the green and you can darken it. Okay. So I'm going back to my green and I'm coming around the blue shape. And I would say just for the edges of your blue shape, just make sure that they're not too straight. They need to have a little variation so that it looks like it's flowing. And if- you mask the white. Um, I masked my whites, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and as you're painting, is if you see an interesting shape, like I like that little shape that I left right there, so I'm going to leave it. It, it, it doesn't have to be exactly um, like it's on the photo. Okay. So now I'm going to stop. There is water that comes right here over this rock on the right. It's got water sitting on top of it and then it flows down right there. So I'm going to use that sort of as a natural break. You could continue and do this first, but I'm going to come over here and do the middle area. So I'm going back into my um, yellow to get a little more of the, the yellow on my brush. And then I'm actually running out of color. I need to get more paint out. So now- and Right where you're painting, we might have Already. You might put blue in there. And we're just going to put that olive on top of it. Yes, yeah. So just make sure the blue is dry, but then you could just, and when I, when I say you put the olive on top of it, it's just going to be a few shapes here and there. So um, it, it depends on how busy you want to get with it, but it doesn't have to be um, a lot of marks. It just depends on what you're seeing, too. Okay. And then I just have a little variation going on where Parts of it are a little um, bluer, parts of it are a little uh, greener. And um, I'm coming around my blue that I have right down in here. 
and then I'm going to make sure I get the top of that rock and then there are just a few marks that are kind of green yellow that come right down between those um, rocks and so I am not painting um, everything in there right now because actually on either side where that white frothy water or it's stop action but where that water is it's in it's grays it's not really that darker greeny water okay so now I have that on there um, I'm going to take just a touch of my red this is actually started to dry back here so I'm in trouble back there if that happens I wouldn't actually do this I would just let it dry it's it's blurry I guess I can do it it's all right um, but if, if you're concerned an area is drying, it would be better to let it dry and then maybe re-wet that area with just clear water and then drop in a little bit of red if you want to. So you always have that um, option to only do a portion of whatever that thing is and then stop and then re-wet. Okay, so this blue water is going to be too um, light for me eventually because now that I have that mid value green in it helps me judge okay how dark or how light that is so eventually that will have to go a little darker for now it's fine because it, I was using it as a place marker basically to tell me where I need to paint okay so this is dry enough this edge right here where I have the green that I can now paint the top that's on top of this rock on the right and so I'm going to use the same colors I'm just going in with the ultramarine blue and my um, new gamboge and just burying it and then as I come over this edge I'm going to just come down just a little bit right in here because that sort of defines where the edge of the rock is and a little bit more right there and then make this edge right here. I don't want it to be too even. Um, I don't want it to be straight across, so I'm going to vary it. And I'm going back up here. And then I am going to go ahead and put some warm in there because I see some orangey red in there. And then I'll stop. So, like right maybe in there and a little bit there. And so now this has to dry and then I would move on from there. So I will let you guys go get that started and um, I will turn this around. Yep. So, okay. Okay. So I'm going to lift some light lines and I'm using my flat brush with some water and I want to think about the direction that the water is moving. And I know here that it's coming from behind the rock that's right here and kind of going around this way. And I actually have a light shape there that's got a weird hard edge that I'm going to use because I didn't. What? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You want me to throw it back here? possibly do that one with you? Um, I didn't no. bring that picture. No, that was you can do one. that as a as the um, the one on there that's the vertical. Yeah. It is that. That is that one. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm just lifting some light lines and I'm using my uh, flat brush with a little bit of water and you just kind of go back and forth to kind of wake up that paint and then I dab with my brush. And then as it comes, it kind of curls this way and then it's starting to come this direction now. So now I can kind of swoop one of those in if I want to, to make it feel like it's coming down this way. Um, I can bring um, a, a line maybe right in here. And I wouldn't put too many of these in. So this is just adding basically another value in there because it's not as light as um, maybe my 
my blue is right now, which is a little pale. And I'll go in and put just a little blue in there so you guys can see um, what it needs to do. And then I am going to put in a few darker lines. So you can see that. So I have Ultramarine and my new Gamboge still. I'm just using the same colors. Maybe a touch um, on the blue side. And then I'm going to just kind of pick a, an area and it's like doing little calligraphic lines sort of back in here. So um, just picking a few places to add a, um, a mark and they can mimic some of the lighter lines or you could make a totally um, separate mark that just adds another layer. So my light blue, let me add because I don't have anything around it wet right now so I can go back on that. So I'm going to get my cobalt and a teeny tiny touch of the um, Quin Rose and it's very pale so I'm not adding a really dark layer. I want it to be very light and then I can decide if that's not dark enough I could go over it again. But I would rather um, bring it up a little bit at a time because it can, um, oops, that's probably, I am going to push it a little more. Otherwise I'd be here all night. Actually, I know some artists that will just like build and build and build and can take a long time. Okay, that's better. All right, so I'm darkening that and I will darken this just a little bit. and then I will need to dry it. So now I think you can see that this is darker than these guys. Um, okay, so I will dry that. And then as I'm coming around this way, I'm going to start looking for some of those shapes that like I was putting up in here. See if there's anything I can add to that. Let me dry this, oops, oops. Just don't wanna hit your phone off of there. go in with my ultramarine blue, um, kind of darker green, and I can do the same thing in here where um, if I see like an area where I feel like I want to put um, a darker shape, I can add a little bit here and there. On the lighter blue, I would actually darken this first. Let me see if this is, yeah, that's all right. I'll do it over here. Um, there are some places where there's a little bit of some of that greener water. I mentioned that earlier that you could um, just paint over that area because then you can come back now and just add a few marks here and there to make it feel like there's the green water peeking through. And then as I come down, I will darken that again, drying my brush. I don't really need to for this. And just darkening that a little bit. So I'm just going over that. And then as I come to the water in the front, we can start putting color down here. The water at the front is um, pale. It is more gray. It's got a little bit of green in it, but it's, um, it's not got as much color as it does in the foreground. However, I also want it to feel like it's part of, not foreground, background. I want it to feel like it's connected to this background water. So I am going to use a touch of green here and there. Um, my gray I will make with, um, you could do it two ways. You could use uh, ultramarine and some burnt sienna to make a gray. You can also do ultramarine with a warm red and it'll make kind of a gray purple. But I want, um, yeah, you can do a little bit of both in there. So, get, so if I do that, this is, kind of the purpley color. 
Um, and then if I go with the ultramarine and the burnt sienna, it's going to be on the grayer side of things. So up under the rock itself on the left, there's some gray right up near the rock. There's lots of little bubbles in there, but because this is so small, you can't really, unless you masked all of those little bubbles, um, you can't really show all of those bubbles. And then I want a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of green. You can't talk down in here as well because that is that little bit of green is going to help connect it to that back area. And there is just a little bit of green that I'm seeing and it's very subtle. Um, it's not there, I'll turn it this way. It, it's not this darker piece right yet. I'm not doing that yet. I'm just looking at the very lightest water. And some of that light water feels almost turquoisey. So I'm going to grab some cerulean. If you have cerulean, you could use that and then maybe just a teeny tiny touch of the, the green mix. Um, and I am just going to pick some areas and you can use some clear water as you're painting this on so you don't end up with lots of hard edges. So you could put in some color and then soften an edge here and there is what I'm doing. Um, and then I'm just kind of going back and forth. So it's a little greener toward the front, actually. Right up in here, this is greener. So I'm going to put that in as a little greener. The biggest thing is that you don't want to go too dark with it. If you get too dark too quick, it's going to be hard to um, bring it back. Okay, there is a little bit of my um, blue that I used up above. And so I'm just kind of going back and forth. Oh, um, I'm going to go more gray. And sometimes gray is just the mud on your palette. It's whatever you've got that looks sort of gray. And there's actually, I have so much masked right in here, it's not going to matter. I'll need to move that mask before I can paint um, up in there. So I can just paint down here for now. Okay. And it's a little grayer as it comes over this way and then I'm actually seeing a warmer place in the water so I'm using burnt sienna and I'm grabbing my um, cobalt and a touch of my permanent rose with the burnt sienna if that made any sense so you can use make a purple with cobalt and permanent rose and then you can use a little bit of the burnt sienna with it to um, give you sort of a warm brown purple mix. Okay. And then I'm going to get some more gray. There's a little more value on this right side than there was over in this area. Now, let me dry this and then I can put in the darker value that's kind of um, on the, the lower left. And that could be a rock under there that's darker, or it could be a little deeper water, or it could be shadow from this big rock that's causing that. So let me dry this. So the darker color that's down here, um, I'll probably use my uh, ultramarine and burnt sienna mix just to kind of make a dark brown in that area. And maybe I'll come in and use a little bit of my warm red with it. I would just be careful you don't use too much of the warm red. That was weird. <laughs> Must have been out in the hallway. Okay. So um, 
now that I've got that in, then I've got a base coat in there that I would say before you would remove the masking fluid, just kind of keep going back and looking, okay, do I need to darken anything? Um, do you want to darken anything? Because you might decide, you know, I want my foreground water to be darker or I want it to be this or that. And so before you move the mask, it's a good idea to um, get some of that in prior to taking the mask off. Okay. Um, and then the other area that you could lift some lights would be right in here. Actually, you could lift in here as well if you want to. But just lifting some few highlights in there as well. And give it a little more variation happening in the water. And maybe something right in here. Oh, I can't get this to lift very much. Okay. Okay. So, um, depending on what you're seeing, um, you may need to make some adjustments here and there, and then you can add some layers with either lifting or adding some direct painting with some lines. Um, the other place that I would add some darks to uh, this area would be a few marks I'm seeing that are over the blue of the water that I put back in there. Um, and they're kind of swirly. So depending on uh, what you're seeing, I don't know, those are very good. <laughs> They're kind of, whoa, that's a little uh, hard edged, or not hard edged, a little um, geometric. Swirly, swirly is better than geometric for water. So yeah, just be careful you're not getting We've too geometric. Nice square, <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then um, just a touch down in here. So just a couple lines here and there can um, give it more interest and, and break it up a little bit so that it's not too solid. Um, so I will let you guys go work on yours and then if there's time I can show you some rocks. Okay. So I am using, uh, I'm going to use my warm red which is the Parole Scarlet, my Burnt Sienna, and maybe a touch of um, Cobalt uh, with that. But what I'm looking for, the first rock on the left in the back is um, very pale, but it's got some tone to it. It's not white white. It's kind of a creamy sort of um, brown, and then there's a brighter orangier place down where it's close to the water on the left side of that rock. So the burnt sienna, and I may even have added a little bit of new gamboge, my yellow that I'm using, to that brown on the brighter, warmer spot on there. So I think I will try that. So that's uh, burnt sienna with a tiny touch of new gamboge. It's not very much. So you don't want to make your rock look yellow. You just want to change the burnt sienna so that it's just a little, um, it's almost tan now. And then I've got my warm red out and I've got the, I'm gonna pull out just a little more burnt sienna. And this may only be the, um, if I can dry it right quick, I'll show you the shadow too, but we'll see. I don't want to take up too much time. Okay, so I've got some cobalt out in case I want it. The cobalt is not to make my rock blue, but to just tone that burnt sienna just a little bit if I need to. Okay, and I'm going to um, paint, I'm thinking about just the lightest side or the lightest part of it right now. 
So I'm going to start with the burnt sienna. I actually need to go get some more new gamboge because I pulled in more burnt sienna. And um, I think I want to add, whoops, that's not the brush I paint with. All right, I will use this one and I will have to get more paint on my brush. So I'm going to put some water right up in there first because that will help me keep from getting too dark with it, I hope. And then I went back, I got my burnt sienna and the new gamboge, and I'm going to start at the top and sort of toward the back because there is some warm at the back of this rock. And back, I mean the right side that we can see. And then I'm going to skip an area right in the middle where it's the most um, lit and come down from there to um, the bottom edge and I just put some more marks right in there and I left that lighter area kind of right in the center because um, I don't want to put any color in there. It, some of that burnt sand is going to move depending on how wet it is and um, having it be wet will give me um, some of that lighter area as long as it doesn't move too much and cover it completely. Now at the bottom I went and pulled, got some of my warm red and I mixed it with the burnt sienna to create that slightly um, deeper kind of red brown that's on that edge. Um, you could paint that on later. You don't have to paint it on while the rock is still wet. And then the other thing I'm going to do is, I can't decide because it's kind of warm actually at the back right. See how it looks? It's darker than the um, light side of the rock. I think that's going to have to go in later. If I do it now, it's probably going to move. And I did not do that on, well, I did, it's right there, okay. So I need to dry that, but before um, I dry that, I can go ahead and put some color on these, the upper two parts on these guys. And it's sort of that same process where I'm looking for the lightest lights, and I'm going to go ahead and put some water on here. And I'll put some water on this one as well. And then I'm going to use the burnt sienna for this one with a touch of my cobalt because it's a little, it's not quite as warm. And I'm just placing some of that um, on there kind of randomly. I'll get just a little bit of the red down in here. Um, so that it has some light places and some places with some value on it, which the value is sort of a light value. It's not really, well, I guess it could go mid value. You could go a little darker, which I need to pull out more burnt sienna to do that. Okay, so if I wanna go a little darker and not have to come back later and add anything to this, okay. Good. And because my rock next to it was a little wet, I um, had some of that color from that rock move into this one, but it's fine. So these guys do not have to have a specific color in a specific spot and exact shapes. It's more just about trying to have the lights and the darks. This is almost dry and it, before it dries, I'm going to take and put just a little bit, I grabbed um, my ultramarine with a touch of the burnt sienna and added a little more to it. But you could let it dry and then come back and add some other shapes to, a, to the rocks. Rocks are very random, so they don't have to be a specific way. It's more that I'm just looking for some lights and, and highlights where the, the sunlight is hitting them. Okay, so let me dry those. Okay, so I'm going to use Ultramarine 
and burnt sienna, but I also still have some of my warm red out if I decide I want to put a little bit of that in. But that burnt sienna ultramarine mix is a really good dark mix to use for the sides of those rocks. And they are um, very much in shadow. Yeah, so I am going to try to push it dark and my um, paint on my palette is pretty dry. It's There's a lot of pigment out, not a lot of water in them because they're not like flowing down my palette right now. So that's what you're looking for when you're trying to make a dark mix. And I have a lot of burnt sienna on my brush right now, so I may have to pull more ultramarine out if this is not dark enough. Okay, so then I'm going to go over and I'm looking at the edge. There's a little bit of some randomness to it. So I'm trying to kind of follow that edge to make it not be too perfect. And then I'm coming down. It's a little bluer in one area. And so now I could go a little warmer if I want back here, just because it makes it interesting to have more than one color in a shape. And I'll put some color up there. And then I can fix that back edge value in a little bit. Um, so I am going to actually go right into the rock next to it. I'm going back to my um, bluer mix. And then I'm going to come down. There's actually some kind of green, mossy, looks like, uh, what would it be? Algae? Maybe it's green on the rock. Yeah. It's probably mossy. Um, so I have that darkened, so I can go back in and put that green on there in a little bit. And then same thing here. So you could do these separately if you want to, but you can see where I can just go across and do all of these shadows at the same time too. All right, now. Some of those edges can be a little softer in places. So I got my brush clean, I dried it just a little bit so it's just damp, and then just picking a few of those edges here and there to sort of blur up into the rock can make it feel more realistic because you have those lost and found edges. And lost and found edges in watercolor are um, really strong things to use. Okay, so I'm coming back and this is still damp where I've put the um, shadow for the rock in there. Where's my, oh, okay. So I'm just coming back in with some green on that rock and then I'm going to use a little bit of water again on a couple edges here and there to kind of blur that into the rock itself a little bit. Um, and then you could go back in if you feel like there's any place where like, oh, there's a shape kind of right in there on that rock or uh, maybe this is a little darker right here and you can add some of those marks. Maybe there's a a crack in the rock and so you'll, you're seeing a shadow because of, or a, a darker area because of that and um, you could go in and add a few more layers here and there. There is um, a few darker places on this rock right down at the bottom and this is dried enough now that I can go back and put some of that in there and maybe just a few marks and I actually turned my head at that point when I was making that mark. So if you can be random when you make your marks. <laughs> close your eyes. That's right. Close your eyes. Be careful where you're putting it, though, because you might paint it in the water. Um, so I've gone with some burnt sienna and a touch of the new gamboge again. And I'm darkening the back side of that rock where there's uh, a little darker shadow. And I'm, I'm going to grab a touch of the blue my um, I think it was my ultramarine right in there just to darken that back edge of that rock okay, put it up there too okay so then it is um, you know like you can put in that first layer let it dry and then if you see anything else that you want to add or uh, 
I went kind of fast because I was trying to get it get done with it so you guys could see it right quick but you can do it in layers so you can do the lightest stuff let it dry then do the shadows if you want to or add a next layer to the lighter area and give it some texture but it's more about just making sure you keep some of the lights and then make sure you have your darks dark enough okay I will stop there